Um, and you know, to any who might say, well, look, that's just speculation, uh, my answer would be think back to February 2003 and that someone had told you that after five years, a million Iraqis would be dead. Would you believe it? No, no, that's, uh, that's an exaggeration. A quarter of the country driven from their homes. <coughs> I mean, we're talking, if you translate that into the American population, you're talking about displacing 50 to 60 million people in this country. That's what we're talking about. I mean, and we found Katrina outrageous, which it was outrageous. What did that involve? A few hundred thousand people. What is 60 million like? You know, and fleeing from your home doesn't mean you go to a club med. It means you're without food, water, Subject to being killed or robbed. I mean, you, you don't know who you're going, where you're going. I mean, you know. And of course, this is one of the criminal things in this country: is Iraqi lives are considered expendable, unimportant, and so on. I mean, I can go on about this for a half an hour about the way the media has refused to even deal with this. You know, you get the count of American soldiers dead every single day on the television. When you get the Report of Iraqis. Oh, we've killed a million five hundred thousand Iraqis as of today. No, we don't count it casualties. So according to Rumsfeld. So anyway, this is really a, a potential nightmare. And if you look at Scott Ritter's book, it can go through the region. I'm not going to read all of it, but he posits various left scenarios of escalation, including attacking shipping in the Gulf, creating a worldwide economic crisis. Remember, if there's a worldwide economic crisis, people starve to death in Haiti, in Bangladesh, in the United States, in other places. The whole network of production, which is very intertwined, gets shattered, disrupted. Shattered is too strong a word, but disrupted. You know, there can be attacks on oil production in Saudi Arabia. There could be a whole war in Israel, Lebanon, along with uh, Gaza, uh, Lebanon. Um, you know, there can be the cutting off of U.S. forces in Iraq and a, and a whole escalation there. There can be, yes, terrorist attacks in other countries. I mean, you know, this, the concatenations of this are, are unfathomable. What about in the United States? Um, well, uh, Dan Ellsberg's making the point for some time that this could be a, a, a moment to declare martial law or a state of emergency in the United States because according to one of these doctrines, I can't remember exactly, I think we covered this in Revolution, I think it's been within the last year or so. Last May, uh, that if there's an emergency, which they define as in very broad terms, a natural disaster, an economic disaster, a military disaster, and it's broad geographically, it can happen any place in the world. So the U.S. attacks Iran. Iran attacks something that the U.S. Uh, feels its uh, strategic interest, a Saudi oil refinery, a ship, troops, whatever, and Bush declares a state of emergency. And of course, you know, you guys have been talking about torture and spying and so on. So this is very profound, but I want to end, I know I'm going on. Deborah said, I told her 30 minutes, and she said, she I can give you 40. Uh, <laughs> she, was, she was more correct than me. Uh, I just want to end by um, talking just for a second about the implications for, uh, if, if, if such an attack took place, you know, what could be the political ramifications and ideological ramifications of this that could be turned in their opposite if world can't wait and other people are out there actively arguing for what's true and what isn't true. Because look, the, the rulers of this country have tremendous power, but they're driven by necessity. You know, and these necessities and uh, so on, uh, are greater than they are in many senses. And they're sitting on a whole cauldron of contradictions around the world, including in this country. And so we, we have freedom and necessity too, you know, understanding this. And I think that just 
thinking off the top, if the U.S. did attack Iran, I just think it would, look, there are people that will go along with this, and I can, I'm not going to get into the reasons why. We should talk about it. There are people that will go along, but I think it would also profoundly shock many, many people and raise foundational questions about the nature of the Democratic Party, the nature of the imperialist system, the whole nature of the Bush agenda and the Bush trajectory, which you guys have been hammering at people and people are having a hard time getting their minds around. You know, the, if the U.S. used nuclear weapons, it would take, could take the level of outrage to, to, just to a whole different place. This raises profound questions about the state of Israel and what that's all about. Um, you know, and, and, and um, you know, in a nutshell, it would even widen the chasm that now exists between what tens of millions of people want and what the rulers of this country are actually prepared and driven to do, you know. And I think we have to recognize that, too. Obviously, it's not, you know, those things aren't going to develop of their own if we sit back and, and wait, <laughs> the world can't wait. Uh, so we've got to act and be very, very proactive and, um, you know, struggle around these things, but we shouldn't lose sight of the potential for things um, spinning into a whole different level of uh, outrage, struggle, resistance, horror, all of it, you know, so thank you.